How's it going, guys, girls? My eyes on sex. Welcome to the second episode of Crewcast. So, if you don't know what Crewcast is, basically, it's a series where me, uh, Nick, Ben, and Chris talk about different gaming topics each week, and it goes on for about 20 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, so last week, basically, we talked about Heist and what our thoughts of it were, giving an overall view of them. So, um, make sure to check that out, link in the description. And uh, Today, uh, this week, we're talking about P15 price ranges. So, it really affected the market quite a lot, and people have definitely suffered off it. Like many people can't sell the players now. People can't can't like use some of the players because if they buy them, they won't be able to sell them after. And many people have lost a lot of profit off them. So, yeah, let's get straight into this. So. What's your guys' experience of uh, the the GTA of GTA P15 uh, price range? You know, how's it affected you guys? Pretty shit because I had a good value team and then it all went down to the VA of shit. Well, how much was it? A couple hundred and then it went down to probably like lost three hundred. That sucks. So what team was it? Bundesliga. Bundesliga. Yeah. Could you sell plays after? Uh, some, but not all of them. Did it take a while? Yep, a lot of time. A lot of unique. It's funny it sucks and can't buy uh, any coins anymore, like yeah. buying more expensive players and like you run out of coins to buy packs and stuff like that. Mm. You just have to buy like, expensive FIFA points and stuff. Yeah, FIFA points are exactly guaranteed. And mm, they still have uh, the, the tax on them. So that's just the 5% which they take off to stop inflation. So inflation can't happen now because there's a maximum price that they can go to. So they can't rise dramatically or um, go down dramatically, uh, whatever. But it's, it's really, really messed up a lot of people and it's definitely deterred people away from FIFA. If you look um, at the transfer market now, it's about Regularly, about five hundred thousand um, transfers on the market, and that that's that's a uh, fairly average. You know, that's quite high, but not that high. on On a really good day, where lots of people are selling stuff, you get about six thousand at the max, which is pretty terrible considering there was about two million uh, transfers going on before the the price ranges. Uh, so you know, it's really really shit to be honest. Fucked up everything. Chris, what about you? It's bad for people who have planned the team like I have. So I've planned to make an Argentinian hybrid team and you just can't afford it now because I had a legend Crespo in it, as you know, and I had some demon here, I had some other players and all, and you just can't make it. Alright, um, yeah, I had a similar sort of problem. I had an Argentine team and I couldn't sell it after. Um, I lost about 300k on Aguero and Torre put together, which is pretty ridiculous. They both floated way, way below their average price. And if you look now, some of the players are extinct. Uh, like um, many silver players are actually gone extinct. Uh, the silvers have been kind of ruined since FIFA 12. Uh, well, since FIFA 13. Uh, they just sort of gone downhill from there. It, they just haven't been as good as they was. But now, now like players like Kishner, um, I think I'm pretty sure Man of Match uh, Delph is still still like not on the market because people don't want to sell him for 25k or whatever he goes for. Um, you know, Ronaldo's were extinct for a while, and um, even even. Goal players, some goal players are actually extinct, like Charisma. Um, if you search him up, you're gonna get a lot of pages of his informs that probably aren't selling, most likely. And then, out, out of a couple of searches, I regularly found only about one or two normal goal Charismas on the market, and it's, it's really, really shitty. And if you think about, they did all this to to sort of prevent coin selling. Um, in the first place, they could have just removed the club name, uh, which which definitely would have got rid of like people being able to sell coins more efficiently. 
because uh, obviously you'd have to get the person to buy a certain character style and a certain you know attributes card to put on it to make it stand out so it just makes it that much more awkward for the person and I think price ranges were definitely a really really bad idea uh, what do you reckon you guys would say about the price ranges you know do you reckon it was effective in stopping car selling? Um, yeah um, yeah you have to buy a new account to get coins and stuff like that yeah and uh, definitely stop people having fun. Yeah. You, know, you just can't buy coins and do your pack up and, and you, you just can't make money off that. You're not very accurate either, it's like, you say Muriel sent you free rated players in. Yeah. Yeah, and these were for like 80k, well, like Falco and 86 rated player. Oh, yeah. It's like, whatever then. <laughs> It was like 15k. So no, I'm not thinking you can get for like 6k. Mm. Yeah. Plus, with the new with the new accounts, you have to start all your stuff again, like ultimate team, your levels. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that, that's another bad thing. Like, if you're gonna buy an account, you probably do it to do a quick pack opening or something like that. Because if you think about, I've been playing FIFA since FIFA 12, and I, I don't I don't want to buy a new account. Just, just so I can get some coins for one FIFA. Uh, it's because I will lose all my progress. I'll, I'll uh, you know, you'll just lose the fact that you was on on playing FIFA 12. You won't be able to get that back and, unless you go back and play each FIFA again, which is pretty boring. But uh, it's just, it's just quite ridiculous, right? Because <clears throat> the coins now, they, they are still fairly cheap. And they still work. Like you can buy people at the bottom of the price ranges, and then sell them for the highest. And you can buy like say three Gareth Bales, and uh, sell them all for the max uh, price range, and you can get like two million coins off that. I think uh, when you sell them all for the for the top price or something like that. But it just proves that they they can't really stop coin selling. It's out of their reach. So. I mean, they, they, I was thinking that they could pro probably sell coins just like on their EA, EA website because it's their game. Of course, they don't want people making profit out of their business. Uh, you know, you can understand that from a business side. They want, they want, they actually want you to buy FIFA points. But if FIFA points were any good and if they were like cheaper, then you you'd make. Like a lot more money on FIFA, and say if you bought a tenner's worth and you got like five thousand FIFA points, maybe you'd be able to open a lot of packs, and you know they made the chance of getting a good player a bit more uh, high. So chance of getting Ronaldo is five in eight. No well, fucking no, but <laughs> uh, you get a Ronaldo. And more people are packing, and that makes the play more attainable. But with the price ranges, it's made them attainable because they floated back to the price that they originally were, and they're actually even cheaper now. Uh, one example is Robin. He used to go for about yeah, well, before during the team year, he went for about a mil, um, like right before. Well, quite a lot before team of year, when the FIFA market settled down, he went for about 250k max, and now he's you know falling back down nearly there. It's like 380k max or something, and um, you know he's really really cheap. It does make the player more attainable, but how are you supposed to attain that player when you can't make money off trading? or make money or getting good plays in packs because some people can't actually you know put money into the game because they don't have access to a credit card or a shop or they just don't want to spend money but they want to still have a really good team so it's just like where where do they go from there uh, then what do you reckon they could do to possibly solve it in next FIFA's Put price ranges off, and while coin sites to come back, but they pay EA as well as part of them buying coins. They get a little bit of the money, and the rest just goes back to the other company. Yeah, so that's a pretty good idea actually. Uh, so that 
the two businesses could work together <laughs> to keep the customers happy and still make profit for both companies. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, Nick, what do you reckon they could? If they didn't want to like, allow coin sales to like get involved, then they could like reduce the price in speed points or actually add coins to their website so they could buy it off them. Yeah. Chris? The team, they just sell like, if you're losing money on one player, you could have like, put a player on the transfer market so that you can buy and you can get your money back off that player. And then you could like, make your team that you wanted to make after that team. So, so it's like buying coins, but they buy it off you, and so you buy it off them. So, so, what you're saying is like, like, micro transactions, yeah. where you pay EA to buy players. Yeah, and you can make your money back off that player that you lose money off. Alright, that's an interesting idea. How, how, do you reckon they might even consider that? Probably, if they're nice enough. I mean, I thought price range is a bit of a stupid idea, especially to announce it midway during FIFA where everyone's just got settled down, everyone's, you know, just got all the team of year players, just bought a load of packs and now they're trying to build back the team that they, they sold so they can open some packs, try and get some good players. Um, so, if, if they did it at the start of FIFA 15 or if they did it at the start of FIFA 16, then it, it just would have made things more, it just would have helped the situation. People would have been moaning as much. Yeah, that, just before like, yeah. the team season. Yeah, and just before team season, no one's got any coins to buy packs, and no one wants to buy key points to buy packs, but you know, we're gonna do it anyway, because we want to try and get that good player. Even though there's a slim, slim chance that we're gonna get it out of the hundreds of millions of players who actually play FIFA, there's a very slim chance that we're going to get one of those elite players that's going to sell for a lot, and most likely he's not even going to be the best player, like getting a team of the season Murtasaka, or <laughs> team of the season Andy Carroll, you know, he's going to sell for 20k max. But I think they, they could definitely improve by just restarting on FIFA 16 and seeing what their options are. I say they can live without, I say they should get rid of price ranges, but so does every other FIFA player, but I'm, I'm not too sure if it's going to happen. They definitely should have took it away and then put it at the start of FIFA 16, you know, announced it so that it would have been a lot easier for us to actually get ready, you know, and I suppose enjoy FIFA without price ranges. And another thing. Um, with the new informs that come out for each team of the week, I reckon that they should uh, leave the price ranges off them. So, like, I came from uh, David Oliver. Um, he had a max price range of 500k minimum of 300k, and basically, uh, there's like none on market. You you'd have to search for eight hours straight to try and get any sort of chance of getting one. So what they should do is possibly leave select players pack them and then leave them on leave the players price range off for about 24 hours and then make up a price range based on that on the price that he's selling at so like if Alba might be selling for 80k then you know make a minimum price range of 40k and a maximum price range of 100k so that he's this price is in the middle of the price range and he he's still gonna sell but there won't be like a scarce amount and you won't be able to not sell it. So let's just get an overall view of what we think. So Ben, what do you think of price ranges? The so they really introduced it in the middle part way through. If they actually did announce it on the start FIFA FIFA sixteen no one would have got really money, but you bought coins near the start and in the middle, and then they introduced that, which you've lost money on. But if it was FIFA 16 at the start, you wouldn't lose money. That's the good thing. Yeah, we all new start. Yeah. Mm. Thick. Well, I just think they're really bad. Just want to get rid of them. Should have been uh, introduced in FIFA 16, like Ben said. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Of course. 
Uh, come on, Calvin. The YouTubers that want to make pack openings and all that. Yeah. It's not going to make money on the place that you pack. Yeah, I, I can't do the squad builder series as much now. Just because if I buy a couple of players, there's quite a chance they're not going to be able to sell them. So, literally, I've been rocking out a lot of cheap, cheap teams right now, with especially silvers, because the silver players, there's like a few on the market, so they are going to sell after. I'm fairly confident of that. But it's definitely interrupted YouTubers, you know way of running their channel it's, it's sort of ruined their brand and their marketing so but uh, basically price sharing used to they suck they suck ass major ass and we all hate them but that's it's just the question of whether ea are really gonna do do anything about it you know it's not made it's not made players more attainable it's made them cheaper but it's not made them more attainable how are you supposed to get a million coins to buy an ibra or a 150k to buy a really awesome Bundesliga team when there's no real way of making money other than playing lots and lots of matches. You, like, I think you have to play like 50,000 games to get a million coins or something, something stupid like that. It goes into the thousands and you know no one's gonna invest that much time into a game just because most people have a life out of YouTube and out of the games. So, you know, price changes, I don't think they're gonna go, just because it's, you know, they're just there to stay, EA are really confident on that. And, you know, as a business perspective, they don't want to want people making money off their game. So, hopefully you enjoy this episode of Crewcast. Next week, probably be talking about something uh, Call of Duty related. So anyway, guys and girls, if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, see ya. Switch to Pez.